everyone here I am I'm at the Outreach Center I'm actually in the Wesley room or the sanctuary area and I've got the balloons in the background that we had for Easter and the cross and I just decided I wanted to be up here today for our Bible story time and it kind of fits in with our story so I'm in the book of John chapter 16 here's what it says now I am going to him who sent me, yet, yet, yet none of you ask me, where are you going? Because I have said these things, you are filled with grief. But I tell you the truth, it is for your good that I am going away. Unless I go away, the counselor will not come to you, but if I go, I will send him to you. When he comes, he will convict, convict the world of guilt in regard to sin and righteousness and judgment in regard to sin because men do not believe in me in regard of righteousness because I am going to the Father where you can see me no longer and in regard in judge to judgment because the prince of this world now stands condemned I have much more to say to you more than you can now bear but when he the spirit of truth comes he will guide you into all truth he will not speak on his own he will speak only what he hears and he will tell you what is yet to come he will bring glory to me by taking from what is mine and making it known to you all that belongs to the father is mine that is why i said the spirit will take from what is mine and make it known to you in a little while you will see me no more and then after a little while, you will see me. Now, there's lots of things that are taking place in, in that scripture. Some of it's really kind of confusing. Was it confusing to you? I know it was for me. So Jesus is telling them that he's going away, but he is going to send the counselor. Someone who's going to come after him to help us along the way. Now, he says, but right now you're grieving. Well, wouldn't you grieve? Here you've been with this man for three years and you've really come to love him and you're learning so much from him and he's telling you he's leaving. Wouldn't you be sad? I know I would be, I'd be really sad, but Jesus doesn't want them to be sad. So he says, I'm leaving, but I'm going to give you someone else in my place. I'm going to give you the counselor, the Holy Spirit in my place. So I'm not going to leave you alone. Now, I remember when uh, I was little, my mom would not, I don't remember her ever really leaving us with a babysitter. I don't remember that. But I remember my mom did a daycare, in-home daycare when we lived in Idaho for about two years. And sometimes the children the children would come to our house for my mom to watch them while their moms went off to work. And sometimes the children cried. And sometimes their moms would bring with them a stuffed animal. And I remember this one mom in particular, she brought a stuffed animal and it was a different stuffed animal. For some reason, I remember this. It was a different stuffed animal every day. Every day, it was a different stuffed animal. And I, all I could think was, how many stuffed animals do you guys have in your house? My gracious. But every day, it was a different stuffed animal. And she would tell her little daughter, I'm going to work, but I'm going to leave this here to be with you, to remind you how much I love you and to keep company with you. And whenever you need a hug, you just hug this stuffed animal. Now, when I look back on it, I think, oh my goodness, that is such a great analogy of the Holy Spirit and what Jesus said to the disciples right here in this scripture. You know, sometimes moms and dads have to go off to work or they might go on a trip or they have to go to Omaha or something. They go somewhere and they leave us with jobs to do or people to watch over us while we're gone. I know my husband and I have taken trips 
and we have left our children with grandma and uh, we always just say, you know, grandma's going to watch over you. Grandma's going to take care of you. Grandma's going to be the one to take our place for just this little while, but we'll come back. And that's what Jesus promises the disciples. He says, I'm going to go away, but I will come back. Now, the disciples didn't know when Jesus was coming back. And as a matter of fact, he still hasn't come back. Jesus has not come back yet. But when Jesus made this promise, he promised them the Holy Spirit and he said he would come back. Maybe it's not in my lifetime and maybe it's not in your lifetime, but Jesus will come back. And while we're waiting for Jesus to come back, we have the Holy Spirit with us to help us and to guide us. Just like Jesus told the disciples. He said, the Holy Spirit, this counselor, will be with you and will guide you and will encourage you along the way. And he's going to have some of me with him and he's going to share some of me with you. Isn't that just like our moms and our dads when they leave us for just a little while to go on a trip or they go to work or whatever, they leave something of themselves with us whether it's a hug and a kiss, or whether it's a little stuffed animal, they leave something with us to remind us that they're coming back to get us. They're not abandoning us. Jesus didn't abandon us when he went back to heaven. He's coming again, he made that promise. And while he's gone, he's given us the Holy Spirit. So look behind me, you see the, the cross and you see the butterflies? The butterflies represent new life, but I also think that they represent the gift that Jesus gave to us, the gift that God gave to us by giving us the Holy Spirit to remind us that we are not alone, never ever alone. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for giving us the Holy Spirit. Thank you for never leaving us, for always being with us, for comforting us and guiding us, and for sharing your love with us each and every day. Amen. All right, you guys have a great day, and I'll see you next Monday. Bye.